think we're going to see hydration continue. It's sort of rise. I think it's going to level off, but I think we're going to see hydration still be a thing. Um, Why? Well, because it's just so damn effective and it's so easy. It's so cheap and it's it's good to flavor and you can make it convenient and you can market it in lots of different ways. Of course. Um, so, you know, you got your RTDs. Well, and it's also the market size, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's massive. Yeah. It's anyone who's an athlete. So is, that's why I say that about Clearway, because Clearway could also kind of have that market size. Sure. Someone's eventually going to have a hydration Clearway combination. There's going to be a liquid IV, like, clear protein brand, where, like, they're, sure. they're a single single product brand. They, they just own it there, and maybe you can say it's Seek, but I think, like, it, someone's going to really win there. I think they're going to do it in an R- though, They're probably going to do it in an RTD, though. I'll bring up Prime here in a minute. Yeah. Because... You know, you look at the hydration category and what it has historically been for the most part has been Gatorade and Powerade. Mm -hmm. And you go to any major like soccer tournament on the weekends, you know, with moms and their kids and all that stuff. And if you watch the new South Park episode where they they parody Prime and called it cred and all that stuff, you know, (laughs) one of Eric Cartman's quotes is, you know, kids these days now are, are now being judged by what their their choice of hydration beverage is. And it's like, all right, most of these kids that are just like in school, they're not sweating a whole bunch. They don't necessarily need a hydration beverage. But you probably experienced this exact same thing. If you were in high school and athletics, sometimes you would just get Gatorade. And not because it was cool, because it was something that wasn't carbonated and it gave you some sort of a functional benefit. I mean, we probably weren't thinking so much as electrolytes, but maybe after like a football practice, I don't practice think it even really has anything to do with any of that. I think it has more to do, especially Prime, for example. It's the Logan Paulness. It's, sure. It's the the demand, and then it's exclusivity, and then like those bright colors, man. Like, I mean, Gatorade had plenty of bright colors. Yeah, but Logan Paul, and we'll get into this later. But like Logan Paul created a massive following of people under the age of 18 yeah for several several years they but followed there's a lot of a-, a lot of athletes are under the age of 18 and that's my point about the hydration category is it spans anything from five-year-olds at the fucking soccer tournaments on yeah. the weekends yeah. to to you know, fucking grandma at, at, at you know aqua aerobics or some shit like that you know any any human being who's out there that sweats is in need of electrolytes and by god we can get it to everyone yeah, and the interesting thing about Prime is they kind of created that, like, Pokemon effect where you kind of got to catch them all, you know? And sure. they're kind of, like, collector's items, you know? Well, and I think... And then it, along with, like, TikTok and, like, trending type of social media, it just exploded into this own anomaly where it domino effects and snowballs into its own thing that they probably had no... N- neither did they have control of, uh, <laughs> nor did they, like, even like, really expect that type of explosiveness. I would probably... That's what created the demand, probably, because they just sold so much. I would probably say that... that Prime is the canary in the coal mine, much like Bang was back in the day. Mm, yeah. Because um, Bang was a pioneer in energy drinks. And, you know, until Bang really caught fire and got everyone's attention, you know, when it came to energy drinks, it was just Monster Red Bull. And nobody really cared anything otherwise until Bang just popped up in vitamin shop. The people that worked at the vitamin shops were drinking Bangs all day and suddenly spreading the gospel of Bang. Super creatine. And it, it wasn't even the super creatine. I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was the fact that Jack O'Walk reached 300 milligrams of caffeine Those for about 300 three bucks. Those 300 miggies, boy, they love them. He em. whooped the shit out of Red Bull, <laughs> who was asking $3.49 for 80 milligrams in an eight-ounce can. And he probably saw that and was getting vodka Red Bulls at the bar and just suddenly decided one day, go fuck yourself, Red yeah. Bull. Here's 800 flavors, bitch. Here's 800 flavors, 300 milligrams, 16 ounces. Get the fuck out of here with your 349. Okay, it was a race to getting the cheapest amount of caffeine for your dollar and doing really well on on the flavoring. And he just cut the legs right out. Well, I mean, even seemingly with, cut the legs right out from under him. Even I mean, with that not butt short ugly Red packaging, Bull. that butt ugly ass packaging, it still worked. It still worked. But Red Bull, I mean, is still like the world leader in energy drinks because of just the simple brand identity and recognition that it has. But so, how is Prime similar to Bang in that sense? Well. Bang showed all the rest of the companies in our in our niche supplement industry that if they can take a chunk out of Red Bull's market, which is this potentially, you know, multi-billion dollar opportunity that everyone else can too. Mm-hmm. And after Bang mm-hmm. was C4 mm-hmm. and Ghost and mm-hmm. all these different other players who showed up to the game saying, if Bang can do it, so can we. And I think that Prime is showing everyone in our industry that if they can do this with hydration, so can Ghost. You can completely explode. So can C4. But I think, and this goes toward like my trends thing, I think that 
if, if you're an entrepreneur and you're listening to this podcast and you have a small brand, you want to launch a, a new brand or something like that. I think you need to think as big as they do if you're trying to really do anything in supplements right now. So, and this goes to like my, my thoughts on like channel trends is like, I think if you're playing a small ball game, if you're trying to go to your manufacturers and say, do you get, can you order 500 units? Can you order a thousand units? I don't think it's going to work out for, for those smaller players. I think you need to come in at volume like prime. I think you need to aim big FDM grocery, all that stuff. 